So I've got another deep cleaning story time for you all today. But before I start, I've got to say, if you're scared of spiders, you might want to give this one a miss. And as always, if you've got a weak stomach or you don't like watching gross things be cleaned, just swipe away. Don't wind yourself up. Okay, for the weirdos that stuck around, I'm going to be introducing you to a more deranged version of myself than you've probably seen so far. And this story's probably going to feel like you've fallen into some kind of fever dream. Apologies to anyone who's already seen this on my TikTok, but there are some people here who won't have seen it yet. And repurposing my stuff across platforms helps me in preventing burnout, so. The reason I thought to tell it y'all is because I found a spider in here not long ago. You probably saw the video, a massive house spider on top of the toilet. And a few people commented, oh, you don't need to worry about those, they don't bite. Ha! Well, that's what I was told about garden spiders. You know the ones, those big bum bad boys that come out at the end of summer. Well, before I get into that story, I need to give you a bit of a backstory. So I was a feral child. I spent most of my time outdoors and I was absolutely obsessed with bugs and insects. And just all animals, really. I'd always try and bring them home from my walks and my parents would be like, nope, put it back. There was one time I'd found this dehydrated frog on the side of the road and I wanted to bring it home. My mum had said no, so I stuffed it into my sock. And then when I got back, my dad was in the bath and I lobbed it in with him to try and reanimate it. He'd never moved so fast in his life. Then there was the time I spent an entire day collecting snails in the back garden. I had this empty sandpit and I remember I found 100 snails and put them all into size order in this sandpit. I had this thing about make-believe schools, so I designed all these poor snails into classes by order of size, like some mollusk overlord. And then my mum made me put them all in a field and I was gutted. It wasn't something I grew out of either, to be fair. About three years ago, I got hyperfixated on giant land snails. I'd seen someone with one on Instagram and that was it. Got one the next day. And that would have been fine, but I'm me. And I decided I needed every different subspecies of giant African land snail. I ended up with 14. Had no room for them. And it didn't stop there. Oh no. The hyperfixation descended into madness. And I had this delusion that I was going to crossbreed all the different types to create this colossal mixed breed giant African land snail. And yes, this top is on backwards, by the way, I've just realised. But yeah, it's not even scientifically possible because some of the subspecies can't interbreed. So that led to a few weeks of depression once my dopamine ran out. My hyperfixations always start out normal and achievable and then become unhinged. And I turn into Victor Frankenstein. Anyway, the story I actually want to tell you, it's about those garden spiders. So when I was six or seven, about Rudy's age, I decided I wanted to collect some of these garden spiders as pets. So I'd got myself a little tank, didn't tell my mum, because she didn't like spiders. And I must have collected about ten of these massive garden spiders. Had them for about a week in my bedroom. And the problem was, I'd been feeding them things I'd found on other spider webs, like old carcasses of flies. With the purest of intentions, because I didn't want to put live insects in their cage. But I was essentially feeding them dust. And then one day I was sitting there and I'd got them out and they were crawling all over my hand. And they must have been starving and one of them must have just thought, I've had enough of this dickhead. And it just bit me right in the palm of my hand and clung on for dear life. And I remember as clear as day, my dad was shaving and I'd walked across the landing and went up to my mum with this spider hanging off my hand. Just all casual, and my mum started screaming. And she was like, oh my god, squish it, squish it! Obviously I wasn't going to do that, so I just walked off from her. Walked up to my dad, he could see me in the mirror with my hand up and a spider just in the middle of it. My dad's very zen, he never reacts to anything. And he just plucked this spider off my hand. And then the ordeal was over, or so I thought. I went back into my bedroom, and with the shock of the bite, I must have knocked the tank over, and all of the other spiders were missing. Couldn't find any of them. And after that, I slept with socks on my hands so that nothing could crawl up my sleeves for about two weeks. And the point of my story is, spiders that aren't meant to bite will bite if provoked by an annoying little girl. So yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that stupid story. And obviously, I hope you're enjoying the clean. And anyway, right, I just wanted to get into something because I know I'll get this. I get these comments on every single bathroom clean. No, I'm not buying a new shower curtain instead of washing it. Who does that? I used to bathe my shower curtain in bleach before I knew you could put it in the washing machine. But every time I'd post a bathroom clean on TikTok, people would be like, oh, just buy a new one. No, you weirdos. And there's no point suggesting tools that will clean the grout easier because I have minus three pounds in my account right now. And I can't afford to buy new cleaning stuff. We're in a cost of living crisis and working with what we've got. But now nah, I'm only joking. You can suggest these things because one day I might be able to afford them. And it's always good because sometimes people in the comments might be looking for that exact thing. 
So yeah, I cleaned this entire bathroom with freezing water today because I woke up and the boiler was broken. Spent ages after the school run trying to get through to someone. After 45 minutes of being on hold, someone finally answers and puts the phone down immediately on me. I was seething. I had a lovely day planned for me and Ike and then I had to stay in all day because they won't give you an allotted time. Isn't being an adult fun? After I made the phone call, I dashed round speed cleaning, deep cleaned the downstairs bathroom just in case the man needed a wee and he did. I was very proud of myself. Fabulous adulting right there. But then I forgot to offer him a cup of tea and felt guilty for the rest of the day. I really don't do well in those kind of situations. I just don't know how to act. Because I want to be personable, but I don't want to get in the way and feel like I'm like watching over them. Do you know what I mean? I'm just awkward. Although I guess in those jobs you meet all kinds of odd people. I'd love to hear some stories from like plumbers or electricians, some of the weirdest encounters they've had. Anyway, just got to put some Milton in the bath toys and then last but not least is this disgusting floor. Don't judge me too harshly though, that's a tiny crevice down the back of the toilet. Got some lemon Zaflora to make it smell amazing, but I'm going in with some disposable wipes first to get rid of most of the gross stuff. I know someone's going to get wound up because I'm not wearing gloves, sorry. But you were warned at the start of this video. I just don't get grossed out very easily. The one thing I can't deal with though is snot. <laughs> When I'm walking down the side of the road and someone's hocked a green loogie on the side of the road. Why? Why? <laughs> Bet you regret watching this now, don't you? Don't worry, it's almost over now. And if you've got this far, I feel like we've bonded, do you? Shared my weirdest snail and spider stories. I'd love to know if anyone else was as weird as me as a kid. And by the way, can you tell I'm in an absolutely gorgeous mood today? It's because my baby's better. I feel elated. There he is, bless him. Trying to get his hands in the water as usual. And I've just got to finish this floor and then I'll show you the final result. I like just trying to get on my back as I do this. But yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching along. I really hope you enjoyed watching, even though it was a bit of a weird one today. And here it is, spick and span again.